Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another episode of Innovation Spotlight podcast. Mm, today I would like to welcome two guests. Uh, one is uh, Jan Stanek from Proper Ventures and, and the other is Martin Bolek, Community and PR Manager from Proper Technology. So Jan, can you shortly introduce yourself and what do you do uh, in Purple Ventures? Mm -hmm. I'm a founding partner of Purple Ventures. Purple Ventures is a hybrid uh, VC fund. Hybrid means that we both invest directly into technology startups, purpose-driven technology startups with global ambitions. And also we invest into funds because we're sort of a family office type of a fund. So for the time being, we are ever evergreen fund investing three to four million dollars per year. Mm -hmm. And what's your role there? Yeah, founding partner. So founding I'm, partner. I, I manage the the uh, Purple Ventures. We are a very lean team. We're like seven people, full time equivalent four people. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Martin, what is your role? Yeah. So I work in Purple Technology, and uh, I'm doing their PR, employer branding, kind of marketing and um, yeah and community management basically mm -hmm. in in purple technology yeah purple technology okay and Jan, uh i was checking website of purple ventures and it says that uh, you are a private venture capital fund that uh, invests into early stage purpose driven technology startups with initial revenue and global ambitions uh, what does it mean if you can kind of like explain it widely mm -hmm. so one startup uh, that's that's a company, young company, which comes with usually some sort of a innovation, and it it should have both ambitions and uh, let's say competencies and and market should be there that that it can expand, let's say internationally, right? So that that they can go after multiple markets, right? Uh, technology like most venture capital firms go after technology firms in other there is some sort of a software component because software combined with the global ambitions uh, means that you can scale it almost like ideally exponentially right so and that's what you when you uh, invest the venture capital like, like l risky risky money you 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 know that that can be like uh, half of your startups may die mm, during the uh, their their journey, right? But the other half uh, would actually give you back the the money you invested. And we uh, the we're both Purple Technology and Purple Ventures are part of Purple Holding as a group where where it has uh, fintech roots. So we started with. Uh, focusing on fintech startups, but the more we invested, one we realized that the the core business has its needs and those evolve. And the the uh, searching for product market fit of the portfolio companies is also evolving, and not always it's evol involving the same directions. So we basically said, why don't we stop having the ambition that we create synergies with our startup portfolio companies? And the more we invested, we sort of started in 2019, more in 2020. Mm -hmm. we, we, everyone in the team and also our shareholders, we were like, uh, does it make the world a better place, the, the startup, right? It's like, is it meaningful? You know, is it? And because we, the, the whole group started as a, we wanted to make uh, a certain service in certain industry more human and on technology edge, right? That great service, human centric, right? And and that's that that was the initial, you know, urge to make the world better place in certain industry, right? And so we, we more and more started to, to asking these questions, like, you know, do we like the idea? Like common sense, right? So we don't say we are impact uh, venture capital fund, but we are common sense, like. Is it great for the like greater society what the, they're trying to do? And uh, the the more the the founder have this strong urge to make the world better place, they will persevere uh, rather than if they would be financially uh, motivated primarily. Right? Mm -hmm. It sounds like you have really high standards for for startups you choose. Uh, is it difficult to find the 
the ones here in Czech Republic, let's say, or you look around the world and you see what you find? Yeah. Uh, we hope also to be the, the fund which will uh, satisfy high standards of the founders, right? They're, they are also the one who are picking the, the, the funds and they should be, they better be, right? And yes, we, we started investing a lot outside of Czech Republic because mm-hmm. also majority of our business is outside of the of the holding group. And also we have at least 30 nationalities within the group, etc. around four continents. Um, so for us, it was natural to, to invest. So we have Singapore, Hong Kong, um, uh, Mexico as like exotic locations from a central and eastern <laughs> uh, European point of view, right? But the more we build the, let's say, brand and reputation through this human-centric approach uh, here in, in Czech Republic, then then the more deal flow, so opportunities to invest we get here. Mm-hmm. Okay, and when I checked your LinkedIn profile, your personal one, uh, I saw you spent a lot of time in companies in China, in Mexico, like in, in abroad, and you worked for several companies. So what was your personal journey, journey from your very first job maybe to Purple Ventures? Mm. I graduated from university in 2000. And at the time, um, uh, and, and I had a chance that I studied in the US and I, and I started in a management consulting in like Deloitte. Uh, and I, for three and a half years, it was excellent school. It was like, they were very picky who they were choosing and intellectually it was very stimulating and, and you, you were working like hell, like it was normal that you work 55, 60 hours per, per week, but you learn a lot very quickly how the business world works, right? And then I went to um, Ebanka, which was actually a uh, first mover um, internet-based bank in, in the Czech Republic and I was, I, I was in Russia at the time um, um, working for uh, home credit, right, with the first credit card in, in, in Russia. And then I went back to uh, consulting and then um, I, I was for five and a half years with Moravia IT. It's a technology company or it's a basically localization translation. It, 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 we were translating software, but they were, you know, in the end we were not translating the software at all because we were this global agency which was actually hiring the uh, translators yeah. to deliver services to Microsoft and Google and Facebook and Autodesk, etc. And I was two and a half years in China, mm-hmm. uh, basically managing 100 people and, and also responsible for Japan, which was transformational uh, for me, uh, and, and both on the professional side and also personal side, because I was there with family, two small kids. And then uh, then I went back where for another year with Moravia IT, and then I felt it's it's about time when I was, I don't know, 38, to show the world that I can do myself, build, build yeah. something somewhere. So I co-founded Projeti uh, CZ. It was like a basically very simple, in very simple words, um, e-shop with kids fashion, like three fathers, you know, with small kids, <laughs> uh, <laughs> co-founders. Uh, that was great, a great experience. And then uh, mm. through one more, one more startup, uh, uh, I, Six years ago, I joined uh, Purple Universe. Ah, okay, nice. And Martin, what can you describe your role in Purple Ventures and Purple Technology, and what do you take care of, and what is like the difference also between Purple Ventures and Purple Technology? Yep. So yeah, my role is kinda similar to both in Purple Ventures and Purple Technology. Uh, so it's quite comprehensive together. Um, and uh, basically what I'm doing is in very nicely put, I'm promoting what my colleagues did. So that's the nice part of the job. Uh, the, all the hard work and uh, hours and all the sweat uh, put into the deals, I'm promoting it uh, afterwards. So very pleasant part of the job. Um, and in Purple Technology, um, it's more of... Um, our business, what we are doing, it's quite difficult to explain to wide audience. Um, so we are trying to make it easier for audience to understand what we are doing and that pro- that uh, results promote to, throughout the, the 
basically Czech and Slovak Republic. We are not targeting some other countries, not yet. And um, that's pretty much uh, it. We are also doing some community activities. We are, I'm organizing meetups, uh, uh, writing some articles, uh, preparing some videos, graphics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the differences between ventures and technology. We are coming from the one galaxy, what was already mentioned, purple galaxy, we start calling it. Mm-hmm. And um, differences are, the, the first, what was first was purple technology. That's w- where it started, uh, 2011, something like that. Um, and uh, so it's running for, for more than 10 years now. And um, with the ra- biz- business was running well. So we thought it's time to diversify the income because uh, we are in we are providing services to financial companies or creating our own financial products and uh, that's that business is hard you you need licenses the regulators are there you are under scrutiny every month uh, so and with one change of um, regula- in regulation it may drastically change your your business as well so we tend to urgency to diversify what we are doing that's when we started uh, building new products, our own products, and uh, also when we started Purple Ventures. So that's uh, a difference. Um, Purple Ventures is venture f- classic venture capital fund, a uh, closed one uh, right now. And uh, Purple Technology is pretty much providing services to certain companies or having or having and running their own financial products like brokerage companies uh, or digital wallet, for example. Mm-hmm. So Purple Technology was the first one and after that, the Purple Ventures was created. Yeah, yeah. as, as uh, Jan mentioned, 2019 or 20 was the, the year when the venture started. Yeah. yeah, We have kind of similar values and deal view on the world, let's say. Uh, so... Can you describe your own values and vision with Purple, Ven- uh, Purple Ventures and uh, what do you want to achieve as a fund? Maybe you, Jan. Yeah. Um, so long term, obviously, it is to create, uh, protect and multiply the wealth of the shareholders. At the same time, we believe that we can be very good contributor to the uh, venture capital ecosystem in Central Europe. We believe there's always space for players who are um, value-based. And uh, so we believe what is our sweet spot, what we're bringing to to that ecosystem. We are very founders friendly. You know, when the whole thing started in 2011, uh, what Martin didn't said, we almost died in 2014, oh. right? Mm-hmm. We ran out of money for half a year. There wasn't enough, you know, people couldn't be paid, et cetera. Right? So we know how hard, how I would say bloody hard it is uh, the, to the, start a company. The, there were competencies. How, what is the least minimum of money you need to survive? A day, a day, right? Yeah, so like 50 check rounds yeah, if you yeah, buy yeah. pasta and ketchup, right? <laughs> uh, so, and that, 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 so we're very humble uh, that, that it's like super hard to start a company and scale it globally, but it's possible. It's mm-hmm. possible. You can do it out of Brno or out of Friedek Mistek, <laughs> where our founders came from when they went for university from to Brno, right? Uh, and, and you can do global business, right? Uh, and that there was strong um, uh, belief that that if you treat people well, your people and your suppliers and your customers, right, and regulators and rest of the whole ecosystem, sooner or later it it, uh, it will create wealth, right? Uh, Long term, it will work as a business strategy, and it it is working. So we try to be also human. Um, uh, we, as as we say that we have a portfolio com- company which is brokerage with uh, with empathy, so we say that we were like we see we see uh, fund with empathy. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it these values we are when we are choosing some startup to invest in, it's coming from the roots. Like when the company was started, all the values we what were there at that time, we are still looking uh, for them in startups. We are. Uh, investing in. 
Yeah. So it's kind of connected. That was kind of like my next question. How do you choose companies you invest in and what are your main conditions? There must be probably some about that that fits to your culture as well and your view, but also some hard ones, maybe some numbers, something like that. You know, investing, we, we invest into early stage companies. Uh, you're talking about so-called pre-seed and mm-hmm. seed stages, right? So the company was formed, the the, the founding team is formed. Uh, it's a team, not a solo player. We were also started by three founders, right? So we believe in, in uh, the synergy and teamwork. Uh, so we very seldom would actually work with a solo founder. And there is uh, some first traction of uh, there is something which can be called a product. And there is some first euros uh, of revenue coming in, even if it would be uh, if it would be uh, proof of concept. You know, it doesn't need to be strong pipeline. That doesn't matter. But somebody was willing to pay real euro for whatever yeah. the start was doing, uh, and then uh, the the startup investing is less of a. Uh, science where you would use Excel spreadsheets, but it's more of an art to, okay, does it make sense? Do we click together? Do we, can we imagine that it will be really long term relationship can be long years, Uh, you know, do we, you know, smell well to each other basically. So there's like a lot of gut feeling Uh, and obviously, okay, is there a market potential? Is there a market big enough? Um, And do, are these people, competent to make it uh, to globally, right? It's like you can have ambitions, but you, if you've never studied and work abroad and, and, and you have rusty English, how convincing can you be? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you have no bloody clue what it is to do business, yeah. you know, outside of Czech Republic. Like that's not convincing, right? Uh, and it's also, and, 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 and there are other things like, you know, we, we are joking that basically uh, purple people are, uh, they love sport and, and alcohol. <laughs> no, we're joking. But it's like, you know, so there are other things that, that like, like stamina, you know, that, that, yeah. that, that you have the ambitions, right? You have the drive, right? Uh, and, and you show the ability to, to put together a team which 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 can succeed together right mm-hmm. maybe what are the like most frequent mistakes uh, these small startups do uh, or startups go to why do you reject them like what's is is, the, is there something that repeats um, that's, that's that's a good question usually the vc funds are very picky mm-hmm. you you invest between i don't know half and 2% of what you see um Uh, it may be that there's no team. Uh, it may be that uh, it's very superficial. Uh, the, the, what they put together, it's just it seems like a hot water. It doesn't seem real. Is there a real need, etc.? You know, if you see like 68 new social network for some niche, like guys, like. Is it is there really need for yet another social network in mm-hmm. 2023, right? For whatever athletes or whatever. Uh, so is it is it innovative? Is it really innovative? You know, and and, and is uh, does it serve a real need? Well, if it doesn't serve a real need, if it's nice to have, people will not be willing to pay for it, right? Yeah. So, um, and and and. Are these, you know, so so basically, typically from this part of the world, you can have you can have founders who have pretty strong technology background, right, engineering background, but they can be very poor in even being explained mm. what the hell is it that they're trying to achieve, mm-hmm. you know. And I love to ask one question: it's like, could you please explain? Mm. Uh, what you're doing as if you were to explain it to seven year old or your grandma, yep. 90% of the people do not, they don't, they, they are not coming with the answer with an empathy of, as if they were really explaining it to seven yeah. years old or a grandma. They start talking about B2C and, you know, the, the same yeah. stuff, you know. 
So you, uh. need, you need to go after the core of the thing and and maybe a lot of times can happen that people go after trends and web three and stuff like that and mix it together somehow and try to create a product that maybe it's to, not you need to explain in simple yeah. words what you're doing because then you will be never ending flow of explaining mm-hmm. what you're doing to your potential people, to your potential customers, to your business partners. You have to have this at in two minutes in super simple words. And if they don't get it, then maybe it's not the right thing you should work on. Customers need to understand that, right? And yeah. if you are not able to explain it to VCs, you will not be able to explain it to our customers. Yeah. And maybe, Martin, you work in the community. Do you somehow try to help the startups you don't invest in mm-hmm. to kind of figure these things out? We are always giving feedback mm-hmm. to uh, startups we rejected or said, like, not now, because it's happening, we say, not now with some feedback and startups are coming again mm, with the things they improved. So that's happening. Uh, quite successfully, I would say. Um, and we can. W- what we also do is we can give them a contact to some cert- some other funds. For example, we do not invest that much into Web3, for example. But there are others who who do. So we can give them a contact for that, for example. Um, and uh, we can help them validate the idea as well. Like you are focusing on five different things. That's not the right approach. Yeah, you have to focus on one max two things so do that and come again later so give them a, another opinion and some help with, in this it's it's re- really important that that uh, you know we look there's there can be like 100 plus uh, de- uh leads right 100 100 plus startups can come to us every month and it can be more than that right mm-hmm. so we, we are not able to speak with them Right, so we are cherry picking. Who do we speak mm-hmm. based on the the pitch decks, mm-hmm. and we never um, um, speak with someone unless we see this pitch deck. Mm-hmm. It's also about that. Even though I said it's more of an art rather than science, you still want to have a quiet moment where you're looking at the pitch deck without having the human. Let's say. Uh, intervention f- of yeah. the founders, right? Because some of the founders can be very persuasive. On the other hand, right? Even though the so you can fall in love with the with the founders team, founding team, but but maybe the, the the core is not there if you would not be looking at it from the, that perspective, right? So we always want to see the pitch deck. Yeah. So it's like super important, and mm-hmm. it can be eight slides, but it's like so important. Mm-hmm. You know, and and the best is if you know someone in your network who can do the introduction. That really yeah. works, right? Basic reality of venture capital uh, funds is that they very seldom invest into cold leads, right? That mm-hmm. that you just send uh, because that that now that can be robots can be sending you know mm-hmm. pitch deck to hundreds of LinkedIn you know partners of VC funds, right? So. What needs to be in the pitch deck to get your and like attention, or what 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 needs to be there in these eight slides for you? No, it's back to the common sense, right? Mm-hmm. So, what is it that we're trying to achieve? Who are the people behind it, right? Where is the real need it is trying to solve, right? How big is the market? How much money do we want? Why do we need them? You know, what, what do we need this money for? Mm-hmm. Ambition, what is the goal? What, what, where yeah. they are heading, what direction? Yeah, 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 yeah. How, how does this thing make the world a yeah. better place, right? I so, Somewhere, I don't know where I read that uh, startups are maybe too shy to show the that they want to like conquer the world. And that it's a mistake, that they don't say it out loud. That their ambitions are not in Czech Republic, not in Czech Republic, Slovakia or Europe, but all over the world. And that that it's something that you want to actually hear from startups. Absolutely. And but they, when they say A, they need to show B. And this is how we're going to do that. Mm. And this is how this is th- these are the parts where we know how to do that and this is the parts why we need the investment, where we need your help because we need extra people competence or money, marketing budget, mm-hmm. uh the software development budget to make it happen. You already mentioned that you prefer startups uh, with multiple founders. 
uh, do you also look at the way how they kind of divide shares between each other? Because last time I had here a COO of Investown, let's say, and we discussed that. And he said that like it's the worst if you have two founders, it's the worst worst thing you can do do 50-50. Mm-hmm. There has to be a leader. Do you have some some point of view from your side, like a VC fund? Yeah, absolutely. You can tell whether they did the hard work, hard harm work, not splitting uh, the, the shares equally. And also if it's really like early stage uh, startups and you have, let's say, three plus founders, mm-hmm. we would suggest them that they go for when when we enter as a VC fund that they would go for uh, reverse vesting in other words the three co-founders say they will stick with the company for the next three years and if not if one of them is leaving and it can be good lever because you have health problems or you simply want to meditate you know in India because you know, maybe you lost someone, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, what a good lever, right? Or bad lever that it simply, the chemistry stopped working about the, the, the so if, if let's say it's three years reverse vesting and after a year and a half you're leaving, but you had 40% in the company, you will keep 20% and the remaining 20% goes to those two founders, not investors, to those two founders who stayed and you know run the business mm-hmm. it's important because of because you don't want uh, the guy who left after a year and a half to leave with the 40 percent of the company but not uh you know putting his all you know ass off to yeah. make it successful mm-hmm. uh at the same time uh you as a fund you want to make money it's it's you are investing to get some money back uh Can you share some, we probably, majority of people know how you make money, but you can maybe shortly introduce it. How do you make money? And maybe you can put some numbers like, or the market numbers, how many startups get to the stage that make you money? It's a difficult question. Right? <laughs> we are not so long in the market. Yeah. We are not able to compare us with like Credo or these big old names and basically founders of uh, of Czech VC scene. Uh the explanation of how we make money um that's that's a good question yeah uh, uh so good, yeah. basically uh then like it's, it's kind of obvious right either we we um got the some company like in credit which is uipad goes to ipo uh or your shares are bought by some other fund or someone someone else Um, in our case, that's more dif- like not difficult, but we are not there yet. Uh, we are heading there, I would say. Um, uh, and uh, maybe this year there will be some exits, possible exits. So tough question. Yeah, the the, the, the you man make money once you so called liquidate. You you exit. You sell the shares in those startups. We typically most of the times we have less than 10% percent shares. Mm-hmm. Uh, so far we only make money on paper from the money we invested we are approximately on what it's called fair market value 60 percent up uh, since 2019 2020 when we really started investing because the the when let's say we invest half a million into a startup at five million valuation but then there's another round when the 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 uh, the other investors coming after us say that the valuation of a startup is 15 million, right? So pretty much we are triple the money, right? On paper. But unless that startup is not bought, typically it's acquisition. Mm. Very seldom it's like Mm -hmm. uh, initial IPO, right? Um, uh, And also it can be partial exit that in later rounds strategic investor comes mm-hmm. uh, wants to still keep the founding team motivated so they don't buy the whole company but they uh buy the the shares from the initial investors and angel investors and etc yeah. yeah yeah so 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 far we only make money on paper mm-hmm. but it's normal that the funds have the 10 year 
uh, period where the first, let's say, four or five years you invest. Yeah. And then you participate uh, on the, uh, the the follow uh, following rounds with the remaining money. And then you expect that within, let's say, seven years when you did the first investment, you actually liquidate, you exit the, the startup. It's a long, long-term investment, as you describe. Uh, if it's a success story and you sell with the profit, it's great. Uh, what happens when a startup fails somewhere on the journey and there are no customers, market fit, no one sees it, there's nowhere to pivot, uh, then you just... like It's part of the game. It's, it's part, part of, of the, the game. game. You know that, you know, statistically that there will be, it can be up to half of your portfolio com- companies can die. Out of our 20 portfolio companies, none has died yet. Actually, we had one company super early investment, like 2018, where the business model didn't work, but we liked and liked the team and needed the, the product internally for the group. And we did what you call acquihire. We just, we hired them. We just bought the company yeah. with the founders and uh, two of the founders, one of the two two founders is with us yep. still. Yep. And the, the, the other founder was with us for three years. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so look, you, you don't, that's the game, right? Mm-hmm. So as a founder, you do not, uh, have to sign, uh, your private property, like your house or flat to the investors that if you lose their money, you lose your property. Now it doesn't work like that. right? Because I heard some, maybe it, there are some dirty tricks of some funds maybe, or maybe they are, you can describe some, but what, early stage or really like inexperienced founders uh, should be aware of, but maybe some, some, some companies do it like that, that if you don't like fit some or or you don't reach some goals, you have to give back some money. Is this actually, that's very toxic, very toxic. I would uh, suggest that if you are a founder, please use um, the accelerators, Mm -hmm. go to accelerators, who will they will uh, they will um, tell you what the best practice is and what to expect and this is super toxic and be very careful to mm-hmm. and 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 we don't see that that would be the common practice because if if the the funds would behave like this you know you you don't want to co-invest mm-hmm. with anyone behaving like this sometimes we see that the funds are taking stake too too big too high in the company and that creates problem in the long term or, or like other rounds like if they're Absolutely. taking like 40 50 percent mm-hmm. in the precede that's tricky very tricky and toxic as well yeah, yeah and and it can be very dangerous for mm. the founders to to accept for example uh angel investors mm-hmm. who would be greedy right they will send you hundred thousand a hundred thousand euro when you have the, the very first money and ask for 30 Forty percent of the company, like mm-hmm. just like you, you need as a founder, you really need to do your homework and mm-hmm. educate yourself also how this this whole industry works. Yeah, because you're you're killing yourself at the very beginning. Yeah, because you you need a lot of shares to play with in the future. Long breathing. Term. Yeah. Uh, space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My next question is maybe uh, inside of purple. How many people is there? What departments do you have? Like, what's the structure of your company? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe can you give some background information on on, on Purple? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as we mentioned earlier, we are like kind of Purple Galaxy, a group of several companies cooperating together. Um, na- nowadays, it's almost 300, 270, something like that. Um, the m- most of us or most of the people working in Purple Galaxy are working in Brno. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we cover pretty much everything 300 people big company has. So legal, accounting, HR, marketing, ICT. And the biggest uh, teams we have are development teams. Like I would say like one fifth of the company or one sixth of the company are developers. Um, and because we are also the whole it's probably technology, yeah. so we are based on technology. So technology is very important for us. Just that's the reason why we have so many developers. And uh, yeah, so that's also our advantage, I would say. We are able to help s- 
startups or maybe not during the after the investment but before the investment we are able to ask someone from finance is this accounting new accounting innovation accounting software really good what do you think about it and we have somehow in in house uh, mm-hmm. or we have some uh, pros in web3 as well who are playing with it so we have wide network of people who can we can ask so that's kind of place in a in advantage for us mm-hmm. uh, when we are deciding who to invest in. So you so can a lot of people yeah. in customer support, customer right? support, yeah, as well. Sales, pretty much everything what you can think of. Project management. Mm-hmm. So if maybe a startup from your portfolio has some issues with hiring or some issues with something, you can kind of help. Definitely, yeah, and we are doing that actually quite actively. Uh, so we are helping with like HR. Uh, we can give. We we will not do the work for them, mm-hmm. but we will tell them how. You can do it if you want our help. Uh, we can give uh, contacts to to developers, to uh, HR people, uh, to some marketing pro professionals, uh, etc. So that's where I see the huge advantage of widely connected uh, VC funds. So they can advise startups on these stuffs, and you will need help. You will not do it by yourself. So. Do you also somehow cooperate with other funds? Well, absolutely, investing. absolutely. For us, it's like as I said that we are we are actually limited partners. In, in we invested in nine funds, right? So we really believe that it's like super cooperative industry. You would think that, that it's very competitive. But it's like super cooperative. Mm-hmm. You know, you go to international events and everybody speaks with everybody. You, mm-hmm. They will tell you, you know, what's the hard. The, the funds love to share deal flow. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're geographically, if you're from a different country, you love to share deal flow. You want to say, okay, look, this is good stuff we are going to invest in. Uh, the the round is one million. We are investing three hundred thousand. Another investor three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand is still available. Do you want to have a look at it? You know, so we love to cooperate with other funds. We n- I would basically say we almost never invest the whole round we exactly. we love to co-invest we we are happy to so-called lead mm-hmm. with the lead investor who prepares all the documentation does the due diligence on the fund and share it with the others uh or we can we can be the one who's just uh, co-investing without leading like whatever whatever but super super easy and 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 yeah we mm-hmm. it's part it's that that's again that's the teamwork right and you're also spreading the risk Because the basically the game of uh, hitting in this very early stage like a unicorn, like that's super hard, right? So you want to have a portfolio companies to get from 20 to 30 to 40 plus because then the statistics work for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mentioned that you kind of like to meet, share information, stuff like that. Where to go to meet meet people? What conferences in Europe, let's say, are for you the most attractive ones where should where should early stage startups go or or even not really ready startups but just like f- founders with the idea founders with the idea should go to local uh, really local accelerators mm-hmm. etc you know like a, you know a, a idea is like one or two percent of a success mm-hmm. right you need to have the right co-founders and you, t- you need to have right technology edge right and you need to have that sales edge and then like incredible incredible amount of stamina and and perseverance right it's an, an execution excellence and the right timing with the right product is like it's hard it's like super hard so uh, when you have an idea go to local uh local like in brno we have this beautiful Jihomoravské inovační centrum with that 20 years and it's like they do a marvelous job within mm-hmm. Central and Eastern Europe to help people who on mm-hmm. university grounds right have this idea how they would start they have no bloody clue what it is to start a company and you know all that you, you s- start there but if you are a startup yet yeah, there's like dozens of of events across Europe so we, last week we went to two of us went to Amsterdam But it was more for the VC industry, for the limited partners and so-called general partners, the whole run the VC world. And and our colleagues went to Warsaw to to a similar event. It was also a VC summit. That was also focused on VCs. Uh, but for startups, the slush, that's the biggest one. That's kind of expensive mm-hmm. also, but that's the biggest. 
And but even the local ones, even like small networking events, mm-hmm. the contacts play as Jan already mentioned, like contacts are very important. So even there that can help you as well. So join these usually for free. Um and go there even if it's out of your comfort zone. Yeah, it really pays off in the long run. Mm-hmm. When I look at the market now, let's say, uh, maybe what happened in the Silicon Valley with the Silicon Valley Bank, uh, is there some, how it affected the market? And is there some similar bank in Europe, let's say, that can somehow end up like that or has the power to kind of, I don't know how to say it, influence the market, basically. It's a startup market. The The main thing is that because of the inflation mm-hmm. and because of the let's say uh, the the crisis or macroeconomic you know downturn sentiment there's uh, there's not enough liquidity so those who have invested into vc funds and startups uh, there's there's bad timing to sell the, the the shares in the startup so they're waiting right So they're not getting the money back and therefore they're not reinvesting those into new funds. Uh, uh, and therefore the, 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 also the, the, the funds are basically are very careful to invest, you know, because they don't know when mm. the downturn will be on the bottom. And then, then that, that, at that time that makes a lot of sense to invest, right? Because you know, startups are there for cheap, right? Uh, so that's the main sentiment, right? I wouldn't think that, especially for the European um, uh, founders, that the Silicon Valley Bank that they're very they were probably not exposed, or they had little money maybe with their London branch, and their money are fine, right? So I think the m- bigger macroeconomic. Uh, so now it's very hard to fundraise. Mm-hmm. It's like super hard for both startups, but also for the funds, for the venture capital funds to from their external limited partners so therefore it's very uh the the valuations go down at the same time in central and eastern europe the valuations were never too overhyped so th- there's also it's a bit less than it was mm-hmm. last year but it's not 20% or what it was last year maybe it's 80% maybe it's 60% of what it was last year so so it's it's more rational you you if you were lucky that you were funded last year or the year before you bloody make sure that your your the money will last at least until the end of next year so make sure you lower your costs and have the run rate to this bad weather go go through this bad weather because mm-hmm. now it's 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 not easy to fundraise yeah i think uh and if in europe if there is some other bank i don't think so the The, we don't have this like regional banks, right? In mm-hmm. Europe, like in US, there is tons of regional banks, but in in Europe, you have mostly the big names. Even like credit, yeah, okay, all right, that's one case. Uh, but usually, it will not affect the 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 sector of startups as Silicon Valley Bank uh, affected that because they were uh, a lot of startups had money only there, which is yeah. you shouldn't do that, right? Uh, so that shouldn't be happening in Europe, we think. Mm-hmm. Does it also influence the market in kind of positive way somehow? Or the startups themselves? Yeah, I think uh, it's easier and cheaper to hire people nowadays. Uh, there is like uh, these or these big layoffs, right? So people are more willing to uh, get employed even with lower rates. Um, and uh, Also, for example, cost of advertisements, it gets a bit lower because you are not competing with that many people. So if you have a good runway, long runway, you have money, you now be actually thriving. Uh, and if you don't need to fundraise nowadays, it can really help you. We are seeing it every day now, like the amount of applications or people applying for the jobs, it's skyrocket get it like in two, three months. Uh, it's uncomparable. Um, anything else? Anyway, for the uh, now we love it. The, the 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 coming this year, next year, perhaps 2025. You, it's very very rational to invest into early stage startups uh, because uh, it's very likely that um, once this bad weather is over and the economy will be b- 
booming again. Uh, the value of those startups will be booming with it. Mm -hmm. And so these are excellent years to invest. And actually the most performing VC funds were funds investing in uh, the crisis years mm -hmm. and oftentimes by first time founders, mm -hmm. like first time founders of those VC funds, because you're eager to show the world that you can do it mm -hmm. and the crisis years and the, where they were building uh, big enough portfolios, like dozens of like, you know, 40, yeah. 50 and more startups. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's quite a lot of information for our listeners and a lot of a lot of great stuff. And I would like to thank you for 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 being here in Innovation Spotlight Podcast. And uh, if you want to mention something else we didn't touch or or kind of summarize something, feel free. Some last We'd words. Like thank you, thank you, Vojta, for arranging this. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, get in touch if you have a startup who is raising right now. Uh, and if you have any questions, as Jan mentioned, the, every VC fund will interact with you if you give them like proper pitch deck. They will give you some feedback. So don't be afraid and ask for advice. They will help you. This is very helpful industry, even though it may not seem like it is. So enough said. Thank you very much for the invite. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much for being here. And maybe for me, we'll have in a few weeks uh, a pitch deck PDF on our website, on our uplifting blog. So you can maybe download it and take a look uh, at the template that we can provide you and uh, see you next time. And thank you very much for being here. Perfect. Thank you. See you.